I am here because this is easier work than putting my three children to bed in Colorado tonight, which is what I would be doing right now. Uh, I just want to spend a few minutes and tell you a, a story. A story about how I got here and a story about why, for me, the work is so important and why it's worth it to fly out here for a couple hours before I fly home. Uh, which is, for me, this story starts. The first time I saw the flag fall was when I was standing in a public housing project in New Haven, Connecticut, as a college junior. And I was standing next to Andre, who I had spent the last two years mentoring, incredibly gifted, charismatic, athletic, brilliant mathematician. And I stood next to him as they put him into a squad car and took him off to jail for dealing drugs. And as I stood there in Church Street South by myself, I started to count all the ways that we had let him down. And I tell you the flag falling story because uh, I'm, I'm a history buff, and one of, I think, the great stories in history is the story of the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, which was the first black regiment in the Civil War that was deployed. And they were assigned the task of taking Fort Wagner. Fort Wagner was a military stronghold of the Confederacy that no one could take. And in the, and in the fictional representation of this, there is a great moment when they are on that beach before they go in, and one man is carrying the flag. And General Shaw says, when this man falls, who will carry this flag? And I thought as I saw Andre get in to that police car that we had let this flag fall. And I made a promise to Andre that day that I would make sure to pick that flag up and carry it. So I joined Teach for America. I taught high school for two years. I came back to Colorado, I spent six years as a high school principal, and in the last four years, with an amazing team of teachers, we built one Colorado high school that after having a 50% dropout rate became the first public high school in Colorado to see 100% of our seniors accepted to four-year college. But it was, it was in the middle of my fourth year, in the middle of my fourth year when I was at lunch, and Ulysses walked up, walked up to me uh, and stood in front of me. Ulysses, who I had known since he was in the eighth grade, we had carried along through homelessness and through dropouts and through uh, living on teachers' couches until he finally got uh, to senior year, applied to college, got admitted, and walked up to me in the middle of the cafeteria with tears in his eyes and said, Mr. Johnson, why did you make me do all this? Because there was a state law in Colorado that said because Ulysses was undocumented, even though he had been admitted to college, he couldn't actually go to college without paying five times the in-state rate at a rate that he would never be able to pay. And that day, when I saw that flag fall, I realized my job was to pick it up and to run for the state senate, where this year I've written the bill to help him make sure that Ulysses and every kid like him who does his work, earns good grades, graduates from high school in good standing, has a real chance to go to college. But I, I tell you that story because this movement is about a simple and profound idea. One so simple that every school child can describe it, but no school district can deliver it. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all are created equal. In the fight for Fort Wagner, when that flag fell, the terror about that moment is that both, you know if you're gonna pick that flag up, you're gonna walk into the hottest part of the battle. You're gonna walk into a moment of uncertainty where you don't know what's ahead, but you know that you're gonna be called to carry it and to carry it in a role that you weren't trained for. Because you were trained for something else when the flagman falls. You were an infantryman or you were communications. But the commitment is that when the flag falls, whatever role you play, you stop what you're doing now. And you pick that up and you carry it forward. And at Fort Wagner, they were, they were carrying that flag to take lives. In this moment now, we're carrying that flag to save lives. And so I'm not asking you tonight to be a teacher, or to be a principal, or to be a policymaker, to write a check, or to sit on a board. I'm asking you to do something much simpler and much more difficult. 
because I'm asking you to make the vow that when this flag falls, I will pick it up. Because what I believe is that when our grandchildren look back at the idea that in America in 1950, the color of your skin determined whether or not you went to college, will be as reprehensible to them as the fact that in America of 2012, the size of your wallet will determine whether or not you graduate high school. But what I also believe is when they look back, they will have the same reverent sense of courage for the people who in the moment when American opportunity was on trial the most, in the moment where we looked most scattered and most defeated on that battlefield of opportunity, whether it was on the banks of Fort Wagner or in the hallways of a public elementary school, those people who, even though it wasn't their job, stepped in to pick up those flags will be the ones who are remembered most. Because what our kids need most from you is that moment when they feel most defeated, when they feel most afraid to see you stand up, stand next to them, pick up the flag, and lead the way forward. Because where you're leading them is to a dream that they once held and once lost and now believe it is possible all over again. I made that promise to Andre 15 years ago, and I wish that he could be here tonight to see this room, to know that in California, right now, any child that falls has the faith to know that there are a room full of flag bearers who stand ready to pick the flag up and carry it forward. So I'm here for Andre to say thank you and to say let's get back to work. Thank you.